A little about myself. I'm a retired law enforcement officer with 20 years of service. I began my career in the jail, worked the road, and became an investigator. During my career, my training consisted of everything from SWAT to becoming a state-certified crime scene technician. I've investigated crimes from thefts to homicides. After retiring and becoming aware of true crime and web sleuths, I started my channel for web sleuths to better understand the perspectives of law enforcement. Not only do we cover true crime, I go out into the field and assist families who have lost loved ones to homicide and their cases are considered cold. Join me as we look and bring attention to these critical cases. Hello everyone, I'm glad you're able to join us. And as you come in tonight and uh, watch this video or any time in the future, uh, welcome, appreciate you being here. Uh, we'll have a presentation and during that presentation, uh, normally Mrs. Steve or, uh, is with me or she's somewhere, uh, modding somewhere, and she assists with the uh, 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 chat and uh, organizing the questions. But tonight I'm solo again, and so um, I will be going through the chat. And while uh, you're new to the channel uh, and you're in chat, be mindful, be respectful of the mods, families, and each other. And uh, tonight we're going to be looking at the Kohlberger case and see um, what's going on there and has the, uh, have we re, <laughs> is it deja vu all over again, uh, such as we saw with the Richard Allen case, whereas defense uh, um, has, or not only the defense, but prosecution has gag orders, and are they circumventing and jeopardizing the jury pools? And uh, that's what we're going to be discussing. But before we get into that, of course, if you have any information about this case involving the homicides of Madison, Kaylee, Ethan, and Zaina, absolutely make sure that law enforcement, prosecution, defense has that information for the fact that as we move forward with this trial, although it's going to be in 2025, it appears that uh, the uh, uh, for us to obtain justice, the, uh, law enforcement and all parties involved need to have all that information. And... Um, with that being said, let me get in here and see what's going on in chat. Don't want to get too far behind. Uh, I normally do. <laughs> Junior Johnson, good to see you. Miranda Lee. And if you have any questions, absolutely throw them in there. And uh, I will get to them as best as I can. I try to answer all the questions that are thrown at uh, me as much as possible. Uh, Barbara Hall, good to see you tonight. Um Molly, Molly, good, good to see you also. Yes, everything's doing great. Uh, weather was perfect down here in Florida today. It was a beautiful day. Boston Christian, Mitzi Scott, good to see you. Nightbot is here tonight. True time, Crime Time, good to see you. Marion Tate, good to see you. And uh, uh, Mary, uh, absolutely. Uh, we couldn't do what we do for these families without the support of our community. And we wish to extend our thanks to everyone that supports this channel in every way that they do for the fact that without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Hello, Melissa. Good to see you. And this is exactly what we're going to be um, looking at. Um, Sonia. Uh, says, my third live with uh, Steve. Appreciate it. Uh, yes, I was a bit shocked about the uh, Kohlberger's uh, lawyers doing the survey, and I never heard of that. Oftentimes, you'll see whereas the uh, prosecution and the defense gets together, and they will, you know, uh, present to the court that when they're going out there into these jury pools, especially on these high-profile cases, that there are some type of... Um, uh, board hire that is done through these uh, different types of uh, surveys or uh, sent to the potential jury pool so that they, the attorneys on both sides, prosecution and defense, can analyze. This was more of to see that uh, of, of what this type of survey that was done, I believe, was more to see if uh, a jury pool could be um, selected without uh, being um, uh, impartial or that there was uh, no way that the uh, uh, that Koberger would ever have a fair trial due to uh, the jury pool being so biased against his um, uh, against him 
And so uh, that's more where the survey was going. But um, and then when the uh, defense attorneys reached out and we'll be getting into this with some of those questions that if you did have a potential jury out there, hadn't heard of the case. And there's going to be some people out there that uh, pay very little attention to the YouTube world. Us that's in the YouTube world. We see these cases. We have friendships, relationships, memberships, viewing audience in uh, the web sleuth world. And so we, uh, the cases that we know about, we know a lot of information. Some of it can be, uh, you know, tainted, um, biased, opinionated. That's going to happen. But we don't want um, where the jury pool itself, whereas you, because for every member that's taken out of that jury pool through some type of foolishness. And, you know, with the Richard Allen case in the Delphi, we saw the Franks motion where the defense was able through a process uh, with the court of releasing a vast amount of information that throwed <laughs> the uh, judicial world into an uproar. And um, we had uh, attorneys removed. We had accusations of um, violations of the uh, defendant. Uh, wouldn't be able to have a, a fair trial. Um, and so, and now we see the same thing, similar, but in some ways of where information is thrown out, is thrown out there, not to um, the general public at large, although it is now due to that's in the headlines. And, but it was going out to the potential jurors themselves, which is uh, absolutely something that, um, uh, I um, agree with the courts and the judge that uh, that's not uh, proper and something has to be done about that. But uh, we'll be getting into that because uh, we have a lot of things that's going on with this. Also, um, we have, whereas the, uh, the judge is um, uh, setting some deadlines that as a trial and we have certain hearings and you're going to have continued hearings for discovery um, um, everything from uh, new evidence, new filings, and we have a deadline set for the uh, alibi uh, that's supposed to be here in April. Um, and so we'll have some information with that, which I will uh, absolutely is going to be very interesting um, that uh, if there is an alibi, you know, it's more than just out there riding around uh, by himself. Um, you know, he knows where he was at that night um, for the fact that he was up and awake and he spoke to other people. It was something that he discussed with people. And, and so um, uh, some of those people that uh, his friends, neighbors, coworkers, or acquaintances of whatever relationships he had, that they would have discussed uh, uh, what was going on, how you became aware of it. And um, so uh, he realizes where he was at um, during that, those key moments. And uh now, will he ever, uh, in my opinion, admit to that? I doubt it, but we'll see. And then, um, of course, um, the uh, Bill Thompson, the prosecutor of the case, um, has re requested that the uh, trial begin uh, about 11 months from now, uh, March of 2025, 20, uh, whereas the defense attorney wants it uh, <laughs> A few months more, uh, June of 2025. So somewhere between these two dates, we'll have a trial, and uh, whichever one that the uh, judge uh, decides to go with, and for whatever reason. But it will be extremely interesting, of uh, if we, uh, if this trial is prolonged past that, um, because like I said, there's certain information and certain things that are occurring in this trial that make no sense. Um, and that this here is the, what I'm talking about makes no sense. And I'll explain it in more depth as we go through this. But anyway, the uh, prosecutor, um, highlighted that, uh, some of the specific questions that were improper and possibly will taint the jury poop. And I agree that if you were a member of a, of a, a select group within a county and you had no knowledge of a crime and all of a sudden um, you're going to, you have the potential to be of a jury pool and you receive this survey 
and says, have you read, seen, or heard about Brian Colbert's arrest at his parents' home in Pennsylvania? Well, if you hadn't been known or, or knew of that, you are now. And then, of course, have you read, seen, or heard if police found a knife sheath on the bed next to one of the victims? Um, once again, that uh, is not something that you need to be telling someone that is that has no knowledge of the case. Uh, because now whenever they go and would be sitting within a jury pool and they're going through Vordire, then, of course, um, have you <laughs> this question is, you know, uh, uh, absolutely not anything that uh, um, uh, that they say that they oh I wasn't aware of it because now you've been exposed to a improper survey. And then, of course, have you read, seen or heard that DNA found on the knife? Chief was later matched to Brian Colberger. What a unreal question and position to put people in that if you didn't know that, you know it now. And so you've tainted and you absolutely have taken people away from that jury pool. And what would be the sanctions or the correction for this? Um, and when the judge act, acted and stopped it, then, of course, we have some uh, other accusations made by the defense. Once again, uh, it's a remake of what we saw um, and probably not, it won't get to the extreme that we saw with Richard Allen as far as attorneys being um, taken off the case. But these attorneys are also making uh, accusations of the uh, due process that their client, due to the judge operating in such a manner as stopping the survey without a hearing, it's uh, uh, improper uh, due process uh, against Colbert. And um, it's just uh, absolutely crazy and silly. And I just don't understand. Is this a new tactic that will be taken up by the uh, um, the defense teams on all these high profile cases? It's just something that you wouldn't um, I believe it uh, could occur. But the court system has remedies for it. And regardless of what happens, even with this one, they're going to fix it. Uh, the court systems over, you know, there's nothing that has ever happened or will happen. Um, uh, that uh, the courts haven't seen or are not prepared to um, react to. Now, sometimes judges do um, jump uh, <laughs> the gun sometimes, and we saw that with Richard Allen case, but the uh, uh, with the Indiana Supreme Court stepping in, they corrected it and uh, put it back to the original um, attorneys. With this case here, we'll see what's going to happen eventually. Just don't know what it will be. But uh, anyway, let's see. And this is exactly what Anna's talking about on the uh, Lori Vallow uh, Daybell got an impartial jury in, in, a, in a highly populous Ada County, including a guy who spent lockdown building a cabin in the wilderness and had no news coverage. And it's those people that they may be isolated for extreme periods of time working projects, vacations, overseas, comes home, and then all of a sudden they get the survey. And it's taking those people and tainting their judgment and their uh, uh, of what knowledge for, although this uh, survey had these three questions, you know, you could have went through there with every bit of evidence that we know about the Kohlberger case and went in and said, um, uh, one of the questions, did you realize a, a, a car matching a car similar to Kohlberger's was seen driving past at such and such time, such and such time, such and such time? And, and along those, and I think uh, that was touched upon. And um, also even the witnesses, did you realize a, a witness within the household identified someone uh, matching Kohlberger's uh, uh, features or characteristics? And so where do you stop if you allow a defense to be able to go out there and cre create these surveys and send them out across the uh, uh, the jury pools. At what point do you stop it and how do you stop it and why should you stop it? It's for this exact reason that, uh, and the judge made a, a very um, uh, revealing uh, and uh, correct uh, analysis in this case. We'll get to here in just a second. Um, now, the judge was upset a little bit when um, that uh, 
the uh, when the defense claims that by stopping their ability to go out and survey the jury pool, that uh, it was uh, preventing the due process uh, for uh, Colbert and uh, violating his rights to uh, find an impartial trial. And I mean, how can you, uh, you know, uh, get uh, both sides, you know, of, uh, of an issue and uh, you're part of the problem. And when you're part of the problem and, you know, you can't complain about the forest fire when you started the forest fire. And that's what they're doing here. They're, they've created a situation that uh, has put uh, their client in jeopardy. And um, it wasn't by the judge's fault. You know, he's having to do something that he sees that we have to gain control of this. Now, that doesn't mean that there can't be a hearing. And just like we saw with the other case in a different state with uh, Richard Allen, they can have hearings. And if a judge misstepped, they'll correct it. It's no real big deal. But it is something that, uh, uh, you know, we sh I'm glad that we're able to watch this, see this and get an opinion of it. And we get to see our courts and see how resilient they are and how they can face these problems and these issues. Now, judges get upset when you <laughs> when you start uh, telling the judge that he's the problem and he's the reason that their client's in trouble. And, it's <laughs> you know, uh, and that he's overreaching, overstepping his bounds. Um, typically judges don't like that. Uh, I've never seen a judge that did. And, uh, I, uh, expect that he doesn't either. Uh, and, um, but, uh, the judge noted that the, uh, defense's questionnaire was submitted to 400 people without the permission of the court and without discussion with the state. And this is the big issue that why didn't they just get together with that? If you wanted to, um, and you you knew that we were going to be going out and trying to get a fair trial. Um, regardless of what people believe of the big, huge, and, and prosecutors are there for one reason, and that is that they want justice. And when they have someone they believe that is responsible for a case, they throw every fiber of their being about presenting that case to get a conviction when they have the evidence, you know, they're not going out there and saying that let's create evidence and let's uh, uh, just stack it against an innocent person. That's not while people like to think that's exactly what goes on that. Let's just find someone that we can convict and all is well. That's not the way it is. Law enforcement, although a lot of people have that opinion, that's how we look at things. That's not the case. We want the bad guy. We want the one responsible for the case and for the homicides or whatever criminal act for the fact that they're the threat to society that, okay, if it's just to get a conviction against anyone, including innocent people, then of course we're going to have other victims and you know, the good guys out there, that's not what they want to do. They do not want to stand by and waste time, efforts, courts, um, and everything imaginable. Uh, as far as lab and all the people, it, there is a tremendous amount of teamwork to bring a case to a trial. It's not just one police officer that made an arrest and one prosecutor. You've got lab technicians, you've got investigators, you got, I mean, everybody, you know, you, you're probably looking at in, in any one case, probably 50 to 100 people easily um, that are involved in this case in some shape, form, or fashion. Uh, from supporting uh, office staff, uh, transcribers, uh, you know, everybody, ITs, investigators, and uh, lab technicians. So there's a huge team. And, and they don't, we're not there just to put someone behind jail and make society feel good. Well, somebody's in jail. And so as long as somebody's in jail, then everything's good. That's not the, uh, uh, the way it works. Uh, although there's a lot of people out there that thinks and would want that to be what uh, the view of the judicial and law enforcement is, but it's not correct. And, uh, but uh, the judge went on to say that it's kind of ironic that we have worked so hard, both sides to protect a fair trial. And our concern from the very beginning was that the media stuff floating around that affects your client, Ms. Colbert to get a fair trial. 
And some of these questions actually create a concern that they're inculpatory. It, it could be prejudice for this client. And that's exactly that the defense is putting information out there that says, have you heard that my client is guilty for these reasons? And absolutely mind boggling that and, and so baffling of why would a defense do such a thing? Uh, makes no sense. Uh, you're talking about misstepping. Um, and of course, they hired this individual uh, to create this survey. And, <laughs> and it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, I, I don't know if the um, Frank's motion with Richard Allen was uh, a, uh, <laughs> a far uh, more insulting slap in the face to the court or if this one is. I don't know which one is a slap to the court, uh, to the face of the court more because both of them, uh, in my opinion, uh, was uh, ill-conceived, not well thought out, and uh, has uh, done more to uh, hurt the case than to uh, uh, make the case move forward. Let's get into chat before I get too far back. Let's see here. Elevate the process. Good to see you. That's a great name. Elevate the process. Melissa, good to see you. Uh, Anna Lizette, of course. Peggy, good to see you. Anna says that they think they'd be moved to northern Idaho. Probably so, especially with uh, maneuvers like this. Uh, PKC says that uh, they believe uh, it will go to Boise. Um, when is Brian's trial? The, uh, the uh, prosecutor wants it March 2025, 20, uh, and the defense wants it June 2025. So I expect it's going to be somewhere between those two. Just my opinion. And Boston Christian, good to see you. And Boston Christian is watching the ball game. My uh, father-in-law and Mrs. Steve are watching the uh, ball game also. Jonathan Clark. Uh, Jonathan Clark says, Ann Taylor <laughs> is an awful uh, lawyer, one of the worst I've ever seen. So I take it, uh, Jonathan, that you're from that area and you have some inside or or you may have done some research on her. I know very little about her. Um, but um, if it's a case that possibly is going to be uh, for DP, um, the attorney has to have certain qualifications, I would expect. <laughs> that's fine. Wow, that's a ridiculous jury questionnaire. Are they from the same pond? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, and this is what the judge is asking. Why would they plant those kinds of seeds? I don't understand. How many good candidates got poisoned this way? Well, we know at least 400, but now there's more than that because now it's hit YouTube world. It's hit front pages um, and it's become a headline. And why would you do that? Um, and um, I mean, it's, uh, uh, I mean, you talking about damaging the case for your uh, uh, client. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. Um, I, I've never heard of such. Uh, I'll, you know, if we put it to the Richard Allen, they would have, you would have had, well, did you know that uh, our client <laughs> Richard, <laughs> saying that if this was it, which Koberger hasn't confessed, but it would be that if he did or he did confess to someone, uh, the you might as well throw the question out there. Did you know that our, uh, that Koberger confessed to the case or something as ridiculous as that just makes no sense of why you would uh, cut your own client's throat. Ridiculous. And if that's their, if that's the best strategy that they have, then that shows you that the state has some absolutely um, huge evidence. 
And, and, and let's look at it from a standpoint of us as what we do as in our general day-to-day -day activities. When we have something, we know absolutely that what we have is 100%. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all play poker uh, or anything, but tell you, say that you know you've got, you've got the absolutely best hand possible. When do you, you, you know, you want that hand to play through as quick as possible so you can get as much money as possible and play on into the future. You know what the end result's going to be. If the defense had such a great case, they wouldn't have to be bringing up and doing these ridiculous, stupid, foolish things that they would say that, okay, we don't need a survey. We'll take any jury in the land and we'll be able to prove Kohlberger's innocent. But they're going out there and creating this strange atmosphere of a tainted jury pool for some reason. It's some strategy. Whereas if they had the goods, if they had a rock solid alibi, because there's nothing better than a rock solid alibi, because you can't be in two places at once. It's, you know, and uh, so that to me shows that they're, the defense has a very weak case in proving. Now, this is just my own opinion and the way I look at things. For the fact, like I said, whenever I play poker and I have a strong hand, I don't care what uh, uh, the uh, opposing <laughs> player says, does, looks like, uh, motions moving, trickery, doesn't bother me. I know what the end result's going to be, and the sooner the better we play it out. And But we don't see that with this. We see that the, uh, uh, the defense wants to drag it out. And they create these issues within the court. They create these issues with the judge. And um, I don't think that's a good uh, uh, sign uh, for the uh, defense or good image. Southern guy, true crime, member for 13 months. Thanks, as always, for your hard work. Thank you. Let me get that. There's your blue light. Appreciate Southern Gal. If y'all don't know Southern Gal, she has a great channel, and uh, she had a great show last night. Boston Christian's going to be right back. CJK is here. Good to see you. Yes, it was your... Uh, 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 Martin case last night. It was a great uh, uh, learn some things about that. And Mrs. Steve and I discussed some of that uh, information today. I not uh, that up on it, but uh, from watching it last night, strange. Let's yeah, see here. Miranda Lee has uh, been a member for 13 months. True Crime Web is the best channel on YouTube. Love Mr. and Mrs. Steve, and that's my favorite share of yours, Mr. Steve. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Appreciate it. Uh, Mitzi Scott uh, gifted five True Crime Web memberships. Thank you, uh, Mitzi. Appreciate that. We will uh, we'll be going back on the road. Um, there's several different uh, options. Uh, I'm waiting to get some information back from um, um, I, uh, from a university and stuff to see uh, when we're going to proceed with some of our other uh, uh, testing and things that are moving forward. Let's see here. And just trying to Black Widow. Hello, good to see you. Yeah, um, it you would think, but that can't be the case. You know, these attorneys, um, especially if you're DP qualified, uh, that you would have, you know, you know the rules. I mean, you know, bar is bar. Uh, I've known of a lot of attorneys. I've known some attorneys that took the bar numerous times, but uh, they always uh, respected the court. Um, don't see that so much right here. 
But um, anyway, Taylor's office hired this social psychologist named Elderman to conduct the polling. But she later conceded that many of the questions he constructed were not factually correct. So you get the final sign off on this. I mean, you just don't go out and say, hey, uh, do whatever you want to do. Send out whatever you want. Uh, these are the people within the state of Idaho that I want to receive this and never check back upon it. And um, and if you do something that like that, that I think that's you know, probably the most ignorant thing I've ever heard. And I don't believe that would be the case for her. Um, and of course, um, Edelman denied violating the gag order over Colbert's case with his questions uh, and had a declaration that uh, uh, that says that none of the information that and that all the information that was not included, any information that was not widely reported and available in the uh, public domain. So he's putting, he's saying that, well, everyone out there knows these facts, which is an assumption on his part, which is not true. Not everyone out there knows every fact of the case that he knows. Not everyone out there knows every fact of the case that the attorneys know or law enforcement or even most of the facts that we and rumors that we of the web sleuth world know and uh, have um, and our own opinions and our own biases that uh, uh, while we may have knowledge of it, there's a great uh, part of the population out there uh, that um, uh, have no knowledge of it. And so um, I, I question um, his, uh, <laughs> his viewpoint there. All right. Um, is it common for DP attorneys to seek change of venue in every case? I worked some um, 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 uh, cases uh, where uh, DP was sought, and everyone I was involved in, uh, either they came into our county and we worked security details whenever we had change of venue or they brought in a jury or they used our county uh, jury pool for a change of venue. Or, um, but yes, it's quite often uh, that from the county of where the offense occurred, that yes, I think that's going to be a pretty standard request. How often is it uh, allowed and uh, uh, for a change of venue? You know, a lot of things have to be uh, touched upon. There has to be hearings and uh, there's standards set uh, for proof of that. And I think this survey was part of what they were hoping to show that yes, the jury pool is tainted. Well, but <laughs> the courts is not going to allow that the uh, the survey to do the tainting and start the forest fire that burns the uh, whole uh, trial and the courthouse to the ground. And uh, uh, it's absolutely uh, unreal. Oh, Southern Gal says, put not bought in timeout. Oh, man. Josh the Posh, good to see you. And uh, this is, whoop, never get on the wrong side of a judge. That is great advice. Uh, save that for the appeal. He seemed fair to her endless Delays or motions are very poorly written, as is uh, alibi. I um, go along with that. Hello, Cynthia Gaines. Good to see you. Blackwater says, I couldn't play poker. Uh, my face talks. Uh there's a lot of people. Mine does too. I enjoy playing it, but I'm no good at it. Yes, I absolutely believe that. If they had a strong case and had an absolutely solid alibi, I'd, I'd be putting it on billboards. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, uh, you want your client not to be sitting one day in trial when there's, and not only for the purpose of 
getting your client out on the street for not being the one responsible for, for the crime, but making and ensuring that law enforcement gets out there and finds the individuals responsible for these homicides for the fact that if there is a monster out there that has taken the lives of four innocent children, we don't want him on the street. We want that monster behind bars and uh, we don't want some innocent man sitting back there. And so throw it out there because if it's a rock solid alibi, you ain't going to break it. Uh, you know, if it's there, it's there. There's no uh, uh, two ways about it. Um, Brian looks awful confident during his court appearance. He must have a good poker face. I would agree with that. Um, I haven't seen him. I, I would agree with that. Uh, and this is interesting here. The questionnaire is ridiculous. Uh, kind of reverse psychology. One if BK planted the seed for the strategy, mind boggling. Um, that's a good, that's an interesting thought. Uh, because we know that uh, uh, Colbert <laughs> is in two surveys. Um, he did one while he was in Pennsylvania um, of, uh, of how to commit a, uh, a criminal act and, uh, uh, and the best procedures and best practices to get away with it. <laughs> Molly wants to know everything about my poker game. Jill Moser, good to see you. Outside the grid, good to see you. Bama Sin is in the house. Uh, Barbara Hall, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Steve. Thank you, Barbara. Appreciate your support. Let's yeah, see what else is going on. <laughs> Anna says, uh, uh, true crime with my friend and I went to Eastern Oregon today and it was snowing and all the hills and mountains are white. Just saying. Yeah, Georgia boys, and now I'm a Florida guy, we, we really don't uh, uh, do well in snowy mountains and um, all of that. Um, I had uh, some friend a couple of years ago went up to Canada, went skiing. I uh, had no business going to Canada to go skiing. Um, but he was able to, um, I think after about six months of rehab, uh, get where he can walk pretty good again. <laughs> he broke a leg or two. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Cunningham, good to see you. And this is a good an <laughs> analysis of a situation. Another creative writer working for a defense team. Um, yes, if we, like I said, it's deja vu that you look at Richard Allen of what they did to the web sleuth and to the jury pool because that hit headlines. It's out there. And a lot of people um, know about that. And same with this. Um, and the prejudices for both sides are just absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> yeah yeah he didn't know and um of all the correspondence that was sent um and um uh, i think uh the defense attorney said that uh, uh he was sent the gag order but for some reason uh that uh, didn't arrive that's interesting uh sonia torres what case are you working on now uh, I have uh, several, two or three. Um, some of them, uh, uh, of course, uh, we've been working on for quite a while. Um, and, you know, we have uh, Lyric and Elizabeth, uh, Evansdale, uh, Crumb Case, uh, uh, Amber in uh, Texas. We have um, Owsley Case in um, uh, Indiana and uh, have a, a case or two in Missouri. Um, and uh, I have a, 
another case out west that we're looking at. And um, so I'm quite busy. Some of them uh, we haven't released yet because there's some work going on in the background that we can't discuss. And uh, so, of course, uh, when we can't discuss them, uh, but at some point we will be able to. But thank you for the question. Ah, Josh Zapash has been a member for 17 months. Uh, Blue Light for $15 on TC uh, uh, True Crown Web, 17 months now. Thank you. That's very nice, sir. Appreciate your support. CJK. CJK, my grandkids are part Choctaw. Interesting. <laughs> oh, I can't even lie. My face is honest. So I'm no one's fault. Salibi. Barbara, it says I'm the same. Um, will the defense be censored for this action? I don't know what the court will uh, probably do at uh, some point, but, uh, uh, you know, he's not happy. Uh, will it go to the extreme? Um, I don't know. There could be something that occurs at some point. I just don't know what that will be. And uh, PK uh, C said that uh, they had a recent uh, DP case in his county, and he said that they heard about the crime, the arrest, nothing else until the pleas. They also tried to change venue, and like I said, I think that's pretty standard anytime on a DP case. I own the prowl. Uh, became a YouTube member. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your support. Look forward to getting out and uh, uh, staying up late one night and getting on your show also. Yeah, see what's going on in chat. Trying to keep called up. See if there's any more questions. Uh, CJK is a trial first case. Still, sometime next year, according to what uh, in here, uh, yes, that uh, when you have the prosecution and the defense both uh, saying. Um, Dates within 2025. I think that's where the court will go with it. Somewhere's in there. All right, All right guys. Well, we've been here. Let's see what's going on. Let me make sure I got everybody covered. I uh, appreciate everybody that's been members and everything that's in here chat and your support. Thanks, as always, for your hard work. The Southern Gal, Miranda Lee, uh, uh, been a member for 13 months. Uh, Mitzi, gifted five True Crime Web memberships. Appreciate that. Barbara Hall, $1.99. Thank you, Mr. St uh, and Mrs. Steve. Thank you. Uh, Josh DePosh has been a member for 17 months. Appreciate that. Let's see if there's anything else going on. Whoop. And then we had Al on the Prowl became a YouTube member. Thank you. All right. Let me get back into the live. Let's see what else happened. Courtney Lane. Yeah, I see.
Let's see here. Make sure, let's see if we got anything else going on. But we want to thank everybody without your support. Junior Johnson's in the house still. And Hello, Holly. Good to see you. Alan Proud, they lost the power with the blizzard. Stay safe. Don't like blizzards. Uh, we don't have them often uh, uh, in Georgia. We had that when um, uh, uh, the uh, Atlanta apocalypse back in, uh, I think it was uh, 92, 93. And uh, uh, Mrs. Steve uh, still mad at me about what I <laughs> working at. Yes, Sonia. Uh, the judge was clearly upset with that survey. Hello, Ruckus. Good to see you. Yeah, the uh, the part about the, uh, uh, the about the survey asking uh, and tainting the jury pool and putting out evidence that if you didn't know about it, you most certainly would by the time that you read the survey. <laughs> most foolish thing I've ever seen. Uh, well, I, I don't know. The uh, the Frank's motion was pretty foolish, too. Uh, so we have a toss-up. We uh, we should get together and see if we can't um, come up with uh, foolish things that defenses uh, have done in 2023 and 2024. And our prowl given us Weather update, 18 to 24 inches of heavy, wet snow, along with 50 to 60 mile hour. Nope, that's not part for me. Oh, yeah, it was the Kohlberger survey. It's a different survey. It's the one that the uh, defense attorney uh, brought up to uh, that tainted uh, probably uh, it's going to get a change of venue because of this. But anyway, guys, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Uh, if you like the video, share it, send it forward, uh, give it a thumbs up. We appreciate it. And um, I uh, probably have a members uh, tomorrow evening, and then I've got to get back on the road, uh, get back up to Georgia. Um, got to get some uh, on one of the cases I'm working on. Uh, got to get some of the exhibits together. And uh, – meet with some people on it coming up pretty soon and uh, courtney lane says it late again uh, i'll be on the replay crew well we appreciate it i'm glad you're here but anyway y'all stay safe out there and uh, if you have any questions or something throw them in a comment send me a uh, email uh, and i will try to get to those but anyway we thank y'all for all your support and uh, and uh, y'all stay safe bye-bye